kind of can break it in. Here's one more. This is about the argument that, okay, if a coach leaves, the player should leave. And there's a lot of people that agree with that particular argument. But here's when he was asked about the movement of coaches. He, uh, this is before we get to the quote. Moglio hates that. It's, it's, now how a nor- it's not how a normal business would work with lateral movement. The commitment he wants from players must also apply to the coach. He's a former coach, but he views this from an executive's perspective. And here's the quote. Right now, if you have a great year, somebody wants you. You can leave the next year. And with the portal the way it is, all your best players can come with you. The school you're leaving is decimated. If you sign a five-year deal, you're supposed to be there for five years, and nobody can poach you. Nobody should even be able to allow to talk to him unless there's a six months left or something on the contract. If a guy is doing great and you want to extend to extend him, the guy has to make a real decision. If he thinks he can get a bigger, better, a bigger deal, he might just hold off. That seems to be a little rosy to me, an aspect of like how people would view it, but... You know, if you sign a contract for five years, I mean, that, that goes back into the non-compete thing, right? Yep. So, you know, um, what happens when he gets fired? You know, like all this, like there's all these things for that. And like that to me, and I, I love everything you said, but that that's a bit of an oversimplification because how many pro sports coaches leave one team for another while under contract yeah, all, all the time and there's under that's contract. different though yeah and there but, but there, there's compensation that comes back like in the nfl you can you there's draft pick compensation and th- that, that goes back i was gonna say that the whole thing with the whole coach's argument is that when a coach leaves there's typically a buyout number and the school who's bringing him on board like the carolina panthers hiring matt rule guess what the carolina panthers cut matt rule a, or cut baylor a big fat check because Matt Rule had just signed the new deal. So that's their safety. That's their security is the buyout, which is why some buyouts have become absolutely ridiculous, but it's really their only defense because the contracts clearly mean absolutely nothing. They mean nothing uh, because as soon as a coach wants to leave, he can leave. Like it doesn't, you could sign a 10 year deal, you could be gone in two months. Matt Rule basically did that. He signed whatever his extension was, and he was gone like a month and a half later. Yeah. So those contracts mean absolutely dog poo in terms of the length and all that. All that really matters is the buyout money because that's the only defense that the school has. So what we're talking about with NIL, and that's what I mean here where, you know, for the player, all this is great, but it's also free reign with absolutely no penalties whatsoever, no matter what you do. So you can lose Matt Rule to Carolina, but hey, at least their owner has to david tepper cut you like a five million dollar check to offset some of that which then goes into your pool for the next head coach and his assistants and probably nil nowadays as well but what happens if let's say gary bohannon leaves baylor now not the best example because he lost a starting job and so but just a player entering the transfer portal if if Jordan Addison leaves Pitt. What does Pitt get in return for that? You can say that they got the year before and they got all that marketing and all of that. That's a particular case. But do they get any compensation for losing their best player? No, they get nothing. He just goes to USC or to Texas or to whoever. N- n- nothing changes other than where he's going now. But you get absolutely nothing, and now you have to go find a wide receiver in the transfer portal or go recruit a guy. But you get nothing in return. A coach leaves, you at least get some money back. That's the, the major I, difference to me. I, I would be, and, and the thing is, is it's conflict to the one-time transfer rule anywhere you want to go, but I would be for uh, capping the number of players a coach can take from his old school. You know, something like that, but then it kind of flies in conflict with the rule the way it is. Exactly. But, Everything flies in the face of the other thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically. like, you know, but there, I mean, there should be some sort of, because again, he could, in theory... He could take all 85 guys. Billy Napier took he some could, guys? Yeah. yeah. Like, Billy Napier could have gone. If he liked the 85 at, at ULL better than he liked the way the 85 at Florida, theoretically, there's a way for him to yep. swap. I mean, just be well, like, hey, he, you're gone. When I'm taking these 85 with Murray me. State's basketball coach went to a, a roster mm-hmm. that was gone mm-hmm. at LSU and uh, a handful of his players when, and then that that makes sense because he knows them and they know him. But that's the anytime the coaches thing gets brought up, well, coaches are free to move whenever they want to, and coaches are allowed to do this. And it's like, yeah, but it's also a different job title, is it not? Being wide receiver versus being the head coach at Texas or at Oregon or wherever. Like, why are we treating these like they're the exact same thing to begin with? It's this, it's this comparing a CEO to, you know, one of your best employees is basically there. Um, I, I think it should be, you know. 
there, there should be, I, I don't know, I don't, I, there should be something uh, that, that uh, does offset the fact that the coaches have a bit more free reign. But again, I think that comes with how do you then compensate a school when they lose a guy? Because that's what you lose when you lose a coach. You not only lose a winning coach or a losing coach or whatever, and in some cases you may want them gone, but there is, for mo for the most part, there is some penalty that is paid. But for the players, there is absolutely well, none whatsoever. And, and that's part of the, the penalty in the buyout is also what protects – uh, school. I mean, now, now some of it doesn't matter, but it will make schools think about their bad decisions in coaching hiring when you fire three guys in a row and you're paying three buyouts overlapping. You know, you'll, you'll have to reevaluate things and go forward. So that's the only thing they have. But making the contracts more ironclad to prevent coach movement, I mean, maybe. But again, I, I don't know if you can win that argument. I've brought this up a couple of times. Bal Gestjar I, I, on the chat room, I hope I say that right. The only thing I can think of is, well, also Title IX, which I brought up to Mac Rhodes yesterday, which requires women's athletics to be treated equally with men's athletics when it comes to scholarships. Will that ever result in some kind of school-based pay for play? Be you know, again, it, it, Title IX is for equality, right? And I still wonder if at some point Title IX might go, wait a minute, 90 and again, it's supply and demand, and I've argued that. That's why the WNBA, when they bitch about salaries, get more people to come to your games or get better TV contracts, and they're starting to get a little bit better. But don't act like you should get paid like you're Devin Booker. Um, but I wonder about if they're going to start one time going, wait a minute, there's been $1.9 million or $25 million in NIL that we know of, and $24,850,000 is going to men. I'm not saying that's not fair. I'm not saying that's unfair, but I wonder when they all of a sudden go, wait a minute, what well, about us? Well, Title IX would have nothing to do with that because that NIL is all outside the university. Yeah. So it would that would become into a kind of an equal pay argument. It may not have anything it, to do with it, but they it, can it, stir well, it up. Yeah, I'm sure there will be advocates that stir it up for it. Uh, now, one thing that's about to happen is uh, scholarship limits. I mean, they're getting rid of scholar maybe getting rid of scholarship well, limits and and. And giving full scholarships to the sports that don't have them, like baseball and softball and volleyball and all these. So partial scholarships are done. So that balances out. But if a football team can give 100 scholarships, that means that... You can't, though. No, that here, here, here we if go. If there's here. unlimited scholarships... No, but, but the, the, the rule that's coming into place is you could go up to 85. It's yeah. it's unlimited number of signees. Yeah. And that would... So basically what it is, is if you are Baylor and you lost 10 guys to the transfer portal and you lost 15 to 18 dudes to graduation, well, all of a sudden you got 28 roster spots that are free. The, the signing limit is 25. Yeah. So you can't go... You know, that's why you have schools like... Uh, uh, Kansas right now who are well under the 85 scholarships but they can't go fill that by signing 35 guys because you can't sign 35 guys so the the rule that they're talking about is basically there would be no 25 limit you could go sign 35 guys but that doesn't mean you have 120 scholarship players. That means you can sign up to 85. If you need 33 to get to you 85, can sign 33. you can sign 33. Yeah, that's that, what it is. Yeah, and, and that's the part of the story today with no call Arbach, and, and we had the quote on that. Here, let me put that up. Because I, too, was a little bit alarmed by that because I was like, of course Alabama's going to sign 50 guys a class, yeah. and they're going to Well, store... that's the old days of Daryl Royal and company where they just took everybody. Right, yeah. but that's but that that's yeah, that's what alarmed me initially, but that's not the, the okay. way that I'm it is. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, Here's the quote. Because that, that would be abused so quickly. From Nicole R. 